Good morning and welcome. It's good to see everyone this morning. I have just a couple of announcements as people make their way in and have a seat. If you have your bulletins, that will help us. We've got a lot of what I will call time-sensitive information in our bulletin today. Um, first, let me begin. Uh, if you look to the front row, oftentimes there is a peachy family that is sitting there. Uh, they are not here today, or not all of them because uh, they had their baby. So, uh, Colt, yeah. <laughs> Coulter Anthony arrived yesterday morning, eight pounds, eight ounces, 21 inches long, and the word from Tony is both mom and baby are doing great. So, uh, we're certainly thankful uh, for them and uh, the safe arrival of Coulter, Coulter. All right, if you'll open your bulletins, uh, just a couple things here real quick I want to go through. Uh, today will mark the end of our elder nomination piece of our elder selection process. Um, so if these green sheets, if you haven't already filled one out or don't have one, they are out underneath the mailboxes. Just a word um, about nominees. Um, first, whoever you nominate must be a member of the church. Okay, so you need to verify that before you nominate them. Uh, the other piece that I want to call attention to is that we call elders, not elder couples. All right, so that's a pattern in some churches. That's not a pattern in ours. So just one name on each blank, and it's not couples. It's just, just the one name. Again, if you will just fold that up, put it in the box out in, uh, by the credenza. Um, we will continue to receive these through this evening's singing service tonight. This afternoon, uh, we have a come and go celebration of life uh, for Danny. Uh, this will be Wallace and Kay's son who recently passed away. This will be at the Hightower Event Center in Thomas, kind of right off of Broadway. Uh, it'll be from 2 to 4 p.m. this afternoon. Today, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, claim him as your Lord and Savior and have been baptized, we invite you to partake of communion today. So um, whether you worship with us all the time or if you're a guest with us, uh, please know that the table is for you to partake of. Speaking of guests, we've got Kelly Bergen in the front row and Karen and Lakshmi somewhere. There they are. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joining us all the way from India, we are the first stop, so be gracious to them. Um, jet lag is the thing if you've ever been overseas and had to deal with different time, um, time what's the word I'm looking for? Time zone, there we go. Wow. Um, one thing I didn't get a chance to check, uh, noodle making, is that tomorrow afternoon? So the way it has it in the bulletin. So tomorrow afternoon at what time? Four o'clock. Um, so tomorrow afternoon, noodle making, if you're interested in that, it'll be up at the church kitchen. Next week, a number of things going on. We have a, a kind of a church-wide potluck. This is our usual potluck, and with that, we couple a food drive. If you will look there, there's some items that you can uh, bring for Connections Food and Resource Center. This time, they include things beyond just food, so just kind of pay attention to that list and plan to bring that next week. Also, if you took pepper nut makings or the Crisco and the, uh, the recipe, uh, bring that back next Sunday, and we will look to be doing that on the 20th, so the following Sunday. Let's see... As you were coming into the sanctuary today, if you came through these doors back here, you'll notice uh, a table out in the foyer. It has some items from India, including some curriculum that the new school is using, so you get a chance to look through those. Do not take those textbooks. Just look through them so you have a sense of what they are getting into. And there's a lot of other information on the table that you can look at. And, and Karen, I'll let you and Lakshmi indicate what they can take and what they cannot, okay? That's fair enough. Um, tonight, if you want to participate in our singing evening and want to be a part of the men's chorus, please show up here at 5 p.m. Again, the men's chorus will be singing, so we need to practice at 5 p.m. If you have not begun thinking about it, you'll start to see these flyers going up around uh, our church and hopefully up around town. This is Day in the Country. If you haven't gotten involved yet, see Erica Stutzman. I'm sure she has a place for you. Last but not least... We provide clipboards to our kids, and we've got a couple guys that have churned in five, and when they do this, then they get a prize. Um, some of the times it's a prize out of the prize um, box. Sometimes it is a gift certificate to Brahms, and it looks like one of them has a gift certificate. 
So if Axel Peachy, if you'll come on down, followed by Wesley Kimball. Are there any announcements that I have missed? I kind of was rapid fire there. Let me slow down here for a moment. Okay, I don't see any. Michael, if you will call us to worship. Good morning, church. It is so good to see you. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians. If you would uh, like to be making your uh, way there, I'd invite you to turn there with me. We, uh, we have so many things to celebrate uh, today. First of all, Kieran and Lakshmi, 29 hours of travel, I believe it was, to get here. Safe travels. And it was, it's been great uh, with being with them for the last several days. Kelly, obviously, uh, representing Children to Love, and he, he came from Tennessee. It's been great with that, so we want to celebrate their presence with us. How about them bobcats? Right? Awesome, and I would encourage you to continue to use that platform of baseball to bring an awareness uh, of God to the people around you. K or J Boy, I about called him Caden. Jacob, you had an awesome interview, and you, you called awareness to God in your interview, and, and I, I want to thank you about that. Jeff already uh, called attention to celebrating new life about the peaches. Uh, we can celebrate that. Today is World Communion Day, and so we want to celebrate communion today uh, along with uh, Christians from all around the world, and um, so we've got some things to talk about that. In Sunday school class, we've been um, looking at a method, uh, a classic method that the rabbis, the Jewish rabbis were using um, to teach and to learn and it was it's an effective way of teaching and learning and it has a name and i'm not going to say i can't i'm not going to try to pronounce that name we midrash right west oh they they left that's right anyway so it involves the the teacher the rabbi uh they would uh, quote the first part of scripture or a statement or an idea or whatever and then the students would finish it, right? So, now this is in the whole idea of uh, celebrating communion, okay? So we're going to try something here today. I might be catching you off your toes a little bit, right? But we're going to see how alert you are. So I'm going to make the first part of this statement, and I'm going to ask you as a church to finish it. Are you ready? He is risen. Awesome. One more time with a little more enthusiasm. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. And you're saying, why am I calling attention to Jesus rising from the dead on Communion Sunday? In my way of thinking, he only rose from the dead because he first died upon the cross for our sins, right? He offered his life upon the cross um, as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins and his blood. Um, we have been redeemed by his blood. So we can celebrate that knowing that he is risen. Um, and we will be having communion at the end of the service to do that. I would invite you, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll just read a couple verses there, and then we're going to flip over to chapter 11. Paul is writing in verse 15 of chapter 10. Paul says, I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participate for, for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, 
for we all partake of the one loaf. Let's turn to chapter 11, and I will begin with verse 23. Paul writes, for I, uh, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's close our heads and close our eyes in prayer, please. God, we thank you for this day that uh, we have set aside to come and worship you as a church, as a body of believers. We are here because you gave your one and only son to be the ultimate and final sacrifice for our sins. We thank you for your marvelous grace and mercy that you made available through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that each individual here today, whether they are here in person or watching online, has made the choice to accept your love and forgiveness by acknowledging their sins and believing that Jesus alone can save us and give us the right to eternal life with you. Help us this day, this morning, and this afternoon to focus only upon you as we participate in worshiping you this day. And we would just pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we continue to worship this morning, if you're able, I invite you to stand as we sing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. I know. In recognition of Communion Sunday, multiple languages have been incorporated into our prayer today. Since English is common to everyone here, the words of the prayer have been put on slides. Feel free to pray with your eyes open so you can read what is being said in another language. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you today and give you thanks for steadfast love to us and people around the world. You are the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, the source of life and giver of all that is good. Herr, wärlis du uns tru in perfectly gleb tust, me wisse es mir net hin. Miss in le warm, wie man noch deine Heiligkeit gehen dazu du. Langsam in achgeber of unser Nachbra und schuldig von geber zu die Schmerz und Leid in der Welt, dei unser ehnen Sünden. Señor, te confesamos nuestros pecados, incluidos aquellos que nos da vergüenza decir en voz alta. Te damos gracias porque a través de Jesús nos has dado un camino para ser reconciliados contigo. Señor, perdona nuestros pecados y cree en nosotros corazones limpios para tu gloria. Proboa, mi sangre me corcó. Sarvatrika Sangamukurka Pradhistun Tanam 
బలహీనులైన వారిని స్వస్థపరచండి వారికున్నటువంటి ప్రభ కుటుంబపరమైన బంధాలను మీరు బలపరచండి వారు మీకు సాక్షులుగా జీవించినట్లుగా కావలసిన శక్తిని ఐక్యతను దయచేయమని ప్రార్థిస్తూ ఉంటున్నాను ప్రభ మా యొక్క నాయకులైన వారి కొరకు ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం వారిలో ఐక్యత శక్తిని దయచేసి ప్రభ వారిని బలమైన నాయకులుగా సిద్ధపరచండి తండ్రి అనేకమైన నాయకులను వారు తర్ఫీదు చేసి సిద్ధపరిచి వారి స్థానంలో వారు నుంచినట్లుగా మీరు బలపరచమని ప్రార్థిస్తూ ఉంటున్నాం ప్రభ ఈ యొక్క అంతర్జాతీయమైన దేశాలన్నిటి కొరకు ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం ఆయన అణగదొరక్కబడుతున్న వారికి న్యాయమును తండ్రి శాంతి లేని సమాధానం లేని యుద్ధం ఉన్న స్థలాల్లో మీ శాంతిని సమృద్ధిని దయచేసి హింస నుండి కరువు నుండి వరదల నుండి బాధల నుండి తప్పించమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నా మా తండ్రి Ehre uns wird für die Menschen weit noch nie von ihr geworden. Natalie, ihr liebt und fang vor allem in Umsingel worden mir. Uns froh, dass ihr alles so umhält und weiß. Verandere alles, so ihr uns verandert. Gebrauch uns, so dass andere ihr können kriegen auf Orde kann erfahren, so wird uns ihr erfahren. Lord, we look forward to the day when we will see the wonder of your glory and bow before you. And we will cry out with believers from every nation and tribe, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Until that day, keep us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry, she didn't then realize. Well, I bring greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, I take it a privilege, rather I would say, we take it a privilege and an honor to be here in front of you once again, uh, nearly almost a an year. And I thank the Lord for his grace, for his protection, provision, and the life that he has blessed us with. And this is our first trip abroad after my father, my physical father was called to be in eternity with our father who had created all of us. This incident has shaped, changed, and has taken me through a deep personal experience of how losing a father or not having a physical father would be for a person on this earth. This has totally changed the dynamics of my interaction, relationship, and care towards the children that are in our care so far. And I thank each and every one for being with us in prayer and also for sending messages of comfort during that time of grief and pain, but also the time of hope that only Jesus Christ can give to us. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for your faithful prayers and partnership over the past many years which is still enabling us to present Jesus Christ both in actions and also in truth. I also take it as a privilege to stand on behalf of more than 200 children, kids that are in our care, more than 75 kids that are being sponsored as non-residential students for their higher educational needs. And also, I am blessed to represent our nation which has the world's largest population in the world, even above China, but the least Christian population, which is less than 2% right now, including the Roman Catholics. And also, I come from the nation, as you know, which is under extremely persecuting nations in the world. 
which means it is easy for a believer to worship and serve the Lord even in China when compared to where I'm coming from. So it's also a great joy. And also I thank you on behalf of all the women that are being rescued and the children that are rescued from various mafias that are prevalent in our culture and also in our nation. And I bring greetings from all the thousands of believers that are in various churches that are planted over the past many years. Here I'm with a short uh, thank you note from the children that are being taken care of through your partnership and faithfulness and through our partner, Children to Love. Dear brothers and sisters, currently we are having a little over 198 children in the orphanage, both in boys and girls campus. Also, you can see them thriving and nourishing and also getting the best possible education. We are so blessed to have you as our partners who have been supporting us and sustaining us in this particular ministry. We, as Baraka Ministries, have been able to sustain and support the lives of these little ones to thrive into adults. Many children are getting married, and as you know, we are already grandparents. And I think we are going to have another wedding coming up when Brother Michael and Faith Kelly's team is going to be there with us in January 2025. Karthik and Ramya, who are orphans, who are brought up with us in our home, are going to get married, if God willing, during their stay with us in January. And also, dear brothers and sisters, I thank you once again, particularly for what you are as a church to us on a monthly basis. You know, we need at least $20,000 per month to sustain the whole work amongst the children, to survive them, to educate them, and also to help them with their uh, medical needs and also provide to them in every area of their life because they live with us as our own children. And I thank you for your portion because you make the largest portion in helping us. Currently we receive around 12,000 plus, 12,500 something dollars towards the monthly sustenance, which means we are still in debt every month to nearly 7,000 plus dollars for which we request your prayers. Please do lift us up in your prayers. And I also thank you for praying with us. And also, I don't know the participation and the partnership of this church, particularly in this school that is standing in front of you. All these past years, we have shown you the pictures of a dump or a dirt or maybe some foundations or an unfinished school building. But today, you see that the school is up there for grades for kindergarten, the lower kindergarten, upper kindergarten, and also for grades one through five. And the kids are getting educated in the Baraka Satya Bharati School. Satya Bharati is the name of the school, which means true Indian school. So we are trying to raise up true citizens of India who will catch up to the fraternity, love, and integrity of our nation, and also who would be the witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ in the days to come as we see a severe change, a shift in the secular dynamics of our country. So thank you very much for your prayers. As most of you know, recently we are hit with pl floods in our place and also in the nearby places. More than, officially it is said that more than 60 people are dead or killed due to these floods, but unofficially it is more than 550 to 600 people that are either missing or have died. And we believe 
these people might have just, I mean, gone or washed away into the sea. And maybe we'll find them or may not. There are so many, I mean, you can see this video where the waters have even covered the whole house. And you can imagine how people have just lost their everything. We as Baraka Ministries have taken a step in faith to pack relief, clothes, blankets, even the rats, saris, and groceries sufficient for about nearly one month for four to six people in a family. And we distributed those groceries to 4,537 so far in faith. And we have spent about $60,000, and I don't know where we are going to get that money from. But God is good. You can see how people are waiting there to get receive the relief that we are bringing for them. And we don't even have room to go inside and take the truck inside to give them the relief. But we thank God for giving us this opportunity and privilege to present Jesus in actions. You can see how they wouldn't even let the truck go inside. So we had to stop them, make way, push the people aside and let the truck inside and distribute the relief to the people in that place. Brothers and sisters, it gave me a great opportunity to visit with other believers and also to our believers who left from our place to live in that particular part of Raja Rajesh Repeat and other areas. We visited them, comforted them, we gathered them onto the streets because they can't go inside their houses while we gave the relief and we prayed along with them, which was a powerful testimony when people around the community could see that we as their pastors, we as their fellow brothers and sisters went to that place, comforted them, helped them, and also provided to their physical need and also strengthened them spiritually. So these are certain things that people may not comprehend, but we are also praying for those people that are affected with the floods in North Carolina and other parts of the states. May the Lord bless them and provide to them and keep them safe in the days to come. So these are some of the people that are being blessed through the recent flood relief ministry. And also, the flood has damaged the girls' campus due to the immense water that had come into the uh, fields surrounded surrounding the boys and girls campus when the vehicles went through the floods flood waters there were waves that were created due to these heavy vehicles and they came and hit the wall of the girls campus and you can see the whole sewer the plumbing and the wall they collapsed into the neighbor's field this not only has damaged our um, in systems the sewer system the plumbing and also the wall, but also damaged the crop of the, the neighbor. You can see the whole wall lying in his, uh, on his crop. So we are uh, in need of double compensation to him. So kindly pray that the Lord will provide us, and it is estimated to nearly uh, about $30,000 to complete, the, uh, to raise the new wall, and it may happen only after he has the harvest the remaining part of his crop being harvested. And also, uh, we need to go down again from the foundations and rebuild and redo the whole uh, structure. Brothers and sisters, where is your money going to? That is a question to many people. Yes, I wouldn't like to share the name of this girl, but she is nine years old now, studying fifth grade. I actually asked Brother Kelly to do something on the picture, which he might have forgotten, so he's saying like this. But that's okay, since we are live. But I'm going to take the picture off. Just have a look into her eyes, into the simplicity and innocence of her smile, and the way she looks. Fine. This girl was brought into the orphanage a few months ago because she was physically, sexually abused by a man whom she used to think 
is her uncle. Her biological father died due to financial stress, and the mother, who was bound to pay off the debts, was intimate, intimidated by this man who visited her and used her for his pleasure. And later, the man did not leave the girl as well, and he started abusing her until one day she was found bleeding, taken to the hospital, and the truth came out. And thus, she is brought into our orphanage, into our care. And you can see that she is recovering from her past brutal experiences. And also, she's recovering and getting a good family with her. And this boy's name is Gopi Chan. He was brought into the orphanage by one Dilip Chowdhury, a relative of him, and he was brought in as an orphan. When he came in, in 2007, he was having tuberculosis. He is an orphan, no parents. He grew up with us, and he is a funny guy too. And he did not take his life to be fun. He had fun with us in the orphanage, but he became very serious in regards to what he wants to become. He worked hard, studied well, grew with us, and he went to college where he thrived, got educated. He finished his bachelor's in commerce with computer specialization. Later, he went and did his master's in business administration. After that, he started to work and earn money and took exams to become a bank officer. He is now working for a multinational uh, company, a banking institution, which is Wells Fargo. You can see my son, Joseph Benny, on one side and Gopi Chand on the other side. And in between is, who is that guy? Oh, he had mustache then. And now Gopi Chang is working for Wells Fargo, and you know what Wells Fargo is. He is working for your bank in India. That is how God is transforming the lives of the least, little, and as we prayed before, the oppressed and the unjust people in our nation through Baraka Ministries and the orphanage. And here, can I have the volume for this, please? From India. Your prayers, support, and encouragement have carried me through my educational journey. I'm so excited to share that I completed my final year in medical degree and I'm doing my internship now. As I look ahead, I'm prayerfully planning to pursue my postgrad in a surgical branch. And doing one is not an easy thing here in India. I know this is a big step, but I trust that if it's in God's will, He will open the right doors. I kindly ask that you continue to pray for me, pray that the Lord guides me, in the right direction and that his will is done in my life. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being such a strong support system. I'm so blessed to have you all in my life. May God bless you all abundantly. Thank you. That's my son, Joseph Benny, who has finished his bachelor's in medical school and doing his a house surgeon as an, as an apprentice. So kindly pray for him and it's a video from him Saying thanks Praise to you. dear Pleasant Hill Church family. I'm Grace from India. I want to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all of you for the support and prayers you have given me over the years. Your encouragement has truly been a blessing in my life and I wouldn't have come this far without it. As some of you know, I'm currently in my final year of my bachelor's degree in computer sciences and engineering and I'm set to graduate next summer. I'm excited about what's to come. And God willingly, I plan to pursue a master's degree in engineering management in the United States. I ask that you continue to keep me in your prayers as I step into this new chapter. Please pray that the Lord will guide me along the right path and that His will be done in my life. Once again, thank you all so much for your unwavering support as I am so grateful to be part of such a loving and caring community. May God bless you all. Thank you. Oh, daughters always bring joy to your heart, right? Kindly pray for her, and here is a thank you note from the boys. So the boys just said, hello dear family, how are you? 
Thank you for your prayers and partnership for us. God bless you. And these, uh, these are the girls uh, here. Also would like to say. Thank you very much, dear church. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you both for sharing with us. It's always good to, to see you all and to hear um, a report of how things are going. So um, at this time, I invite the children to come forward as we put money in the offering bank. Jesus loves me. As we continue to worship this morning, if you're able, I invite you to stand and uh, worship. And as always, um, worship with each of the spirit team.
Matthew 18, 10 through 14. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go back, go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Let us pray. Lord, it is with anticipation that we uh, wait to hear what you have laid upon our brother Jeff to share with us in words, and uh, we would just ask that you would open our minds and, and uh, help us to be willing to um, adhere to what uh, we are instructed to do through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again today, um, I hope you like a good overtime game. All right, so if you're thinking, Pastor Jeff, it is uh, 25 after, we've got communion, we've got lunch, I hear you, okay? Um, I, will, uh, I will use fewer stories and kind of stick with the message today. Um, that doesn't mean you're going to miss out, it just means you're going to get just the facts, all right? Um, today, uh, the sermon title is is one where, if we can get the slides up here, um, do what? Hmm. Pretty confident, but um, the sermon title is, When 99% Isn't Enough, um, and if ever there was a sermon, this is probably a great one to do without slides. Um, <laughs> so you don't necessarily know or realize what's going on. Um, how many of you are okay with 99%? I was, right? You, you do an assignment and you get it back and you're going, man, Lord, just let me pass, right? Somewhere around oftentimes 69, 70%. Um, so if you had a 99, you were nearly perfect, and we all know, and I think I can get an amen here, that none of us are perfect. There's only one who is perfect, and we are not him. Amen? Okay. This becomes the backdrop um, kind of for our story today. So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn again to Matthew 18. And I'm going to focus in really just on the parable side of this. Um, and it starts at verse 12. And Jesus asked the disciples, and this is who he's talking to. He's talking to his disciples, not everybody in the crowd, not everyone who just happened by that day, but just his disciples. And he asked them, what do you think, right? What do you think? And then he tells them this story. If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, okay, note, make note here, we're talking about a full hundred, and somehow there's a separation of one from the ninety-nine, Will he not leave the 99 on the hills, or some of your translations probably says, on the mountains, and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about the one sheep than the 99 that did not wander off. And then Jesus kind of sums it up for them, in the same way your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. None of them. Now, this is good news. I, I, I can't begin to describe how good of news this is. Right? The shepherd is not content with what I'm content with. He's not content to have the 99 safe and secure up on the hill. He wants all of them. He wants every last sheep, including the one that was prone to wander. 
right? This is good news. For those of you who came today and you do not see yourself worthy of God's grace, you are, and he's willing to relieve everybody else who thinks they're worthy to go find you. This is good news for those of you who sit or hear my voice and you think about your past and say, man, I just can't be good enough. Or you wrestle with the question, how could God possibly love me enough? He sought you out. He left everybody else who thought they were good enough to come find you. This is good news if, if you find yourself in the category of lost, lame, blind, feeling significantly less than. There is someone out there who is looking for you. And I'm going to say by your presence here, probably has found you. If you're looking to share good news with someone else this week, I want you to tell them that there is someone who is looking for them, who wants the very best for them, who is trying to bring them back into the fold. Because they so desperately desire them. This is the good news of when 99 isn't enough. But this isn't all of the story. So I need you to kind of plug in here with me a, a little bit and stay focused. Oftentimes when I refer to Matthew 18, it tends to be talking about how to deal with a brother or sister who has sinned against you. That is a part of this chapter. But if you will go in your Bibles and look back to the very beginning, this chapter begins with a single question. It's not, what do you think? It's a question from Jesus' disciples, and they're asking the question, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Okay. Other Gospels record this story for us in a little different way. But it seems that the twelve are in conversation about who is a little better, Right? In Sunday school class, I asked the class, you know, if you got 100 people together, how long do you think it would take before they would start to divide themselves? And if you're thinking, well, no, we don't really do that, I want you to go to the local elementary playground and you watch the kids play. How quickly they divide themselves. Okay, this is the bad news. This is kind of our innateness. We don't have to learn to do this. We do it naturally. We naturally put ourselves above someone else, and oftentimes we'll put them down just so we can be just a little bit higher. This is the backdrop for Jesus then speaking to his disciples about this little child. They're talking about greatness, and Jesus answers the question, let the children come to me. And oh, by the way, disciples who are arguing about being great, you've got to become like them, the ones that are cast out in society the ones that are despised, that are abused, as we heard from Brother Kieran. You have to be like them. Now, the challenge to the disciples that day, as Jesus is kind of applying um, what we often call as the lost sheep parable, I would think this is better uh, described as the wandering sheep parable, right? So when you, you see in your Bibles it says, wanders away, Another translation could read, to be led astray or to be deceived. And so now we begin to focus in on, so why is Jesus telling the disciples this story, this way? Yes, he wants everyone to know that everyone is important and God is looking for you. But there's something else going on here. We get a sense of this as we jump into the Old Testament. And this would be something that his disciples were familiar with as well as Jesus and we go to Ezekiel 34, and this is where God is speaking against the leaders of that day and accusing the shepherds of that day of not taking care of the sheep. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who take care of themselves. Should not the shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, you clothe yourselves with wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not care for the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. 
who will go on to accuse them that the sheep were scattered because they had no shepherd. The sheep were forced to wander all over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Jesus is taking aim at his disciples. He's warning them. You're asking the wrong question. Leadership is about responsibility. It's not about who's the greatest. It's not about who can use their power over someone else. The good news in Ezekiel 34 is that God kind of has an end to these bad shepherds. And he says, I'm going to send one who's good, right? And praise the Lord, we know today who the good shepherd is. It's Jesus, right? It's Jesus. And then in Ezekiel 34, picking this up at verse 20, God has words to the sheep, okay? Because the other truth, while... The shepherd is looking for the sheep or the sheep that wandered off. The sheep answered to the shepherd. Okay, so sheep be warned, if you will. Back in Ezekiel 34, the Lord says to the sheep, See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. Suddenly that lost sheep, we start to understand a little bit better. We get a sense of why it might have wandered. Yes, because of its own choices, but maybe because of the choices of others. As we think about being warned in this passage by Jesus, just as his disciples were warned, I want to speak to the 99. To you, I ask, be mindful of the one. Okay? Be mindful of the one. Resist the temptation to look down upon someone else. Resist the temptation to put yourself over someone else as to abuse them or rule over them harshly, be mindful. The story doesn't stop there, though. Of course, there's that one, right? And oftentimes, we relegate the one, well, that's just the way they are. They're disobedient. We like to categorize categorize them any number of ways, but always in a negative light, until we realize that we might just be the one. To the one that sits here today. I know this sounds strange, but I'm going to ask you to be mindful of the one when you become a part of the 99. Jesus' disciples, these common guys, were pulled from their lives to follow Jesus, to, to come in and learn from and partake of even communion at, at the feet of Jesus. They went from being the lost to being the found. And now they are called to go out and seek others. In this story, Jesus begins with a child, often despised, looked down upon. But guess what? Children grow up. That's how it's supposed to be. They become adults. In the same way, the obscure become famous, the weak often become powerful, servants will become leaders, nations will rise, and other nations will take their place. This idea of being the 99 and the 1 is a dynamic relationship. If you think you're the 99, great. Realize that the shift to the 1 can happen overnight. Remember, the 12 that Jesus is talking to that day, only 11 of them would become heroes of faith. So remember, the shepherd is looking for the sheep. The sheep answer to the shepherd. To those in the majority, be mindful and caring of the minority. To the minority, care for yourselves, right? When you take power, when you have the chance, when the tables are turned much in the same way that the disciples were beginning to experience in their own lives. Today we celebrate the lost being found. 
and we commit ourselves to being in right relationship with all people. Because the truth is, I don't want anyone to be led astray. I don't want anyone to be deceived. I don't want anyone to be lost out on the mountain, alone and isolated. Today, as we partake communion, we recognize that we are the sheep and Jesus is the shepherd. And it's only because of his sacrifice that we have been found. And it now becomes our task to welcome others into his presence. Elders, I invite you to take your places at the tables at this time. It's important to me that as we partake of communion, that I want you to know that you're welcome at the table if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And if he's not, I want you to to seek that out and and to come to that conclusion at some point where you will be willing to profess it publicly, be baptized, be born into the family, the church universal, be born into our family here at Pleasant View, the local manifestation of that church universal, that we can seek to follow the great shepherd together as his flock. As we come to this, I recognize that we come a people in need of salvation, and so we will begin with a prayer of confession, and we'll praise God for his his healing, and then we'll open up the tables uh, for us to come and partake of that which God provided for us. It's our provision to keep us going, right? So let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks today. You are the great shepherd of the sheep. You are the one who has sacrificed on our behalf. You are the one who loves unconditionally. Lord, we praise you for all those things, and and we strive to them. We, We seek to rise to them. And Lord, we confess today we don't do as good of a job as we wish. Too often, we're the ones that are devaluing someone else. Too often, we're like the disciples and we look down upon someone, whether it's because of age or their importance to us, the way they look, the way they act, what they can and cannot do, their gifts and abilities. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us when that thought becomes an action. And we seek to divide the flock that you've called. Lord, I'm so thankful that you know us and you know what we need. You knew that we would never be able to be good enough, that we would never be able to be worthy of your grace, and so you just offered it. You had mercy on us. You invited us to become recipients of salvation. Today, as we take part, Lord, of of your communion, that gift that you've given to us, remind us through the bread and through the juice that we belong to you. Lord, challenge us with the reality that belonging has responsibility. And Lord, as our lives unfold before you in that day that we will stand before you, We pray that others will see you in us and that we will accept the reality that your grace is enough. Father, these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The way we practice communion here is we gather around tables in groups of anywhere from about six to ten. More than ten is about too many to get around the table. Um, You're welcome to kind of make your way down to the tables up front or the tables in back. If you have gluten sensitivities, we have a gluten-free option for communion over here. Um, Our background music today is some music that was provided by the Amani Community Church. Uh, They were here a number of years ago, and so we are getting a chance to hear them again, kind of as we recognize that God is being praised in all kinds of languages today around the world. So this is just an opportunity to remember that.
Elders, are you prepared? All right. Congregation, I invite you to come. The communion tables are open.